Hi, I'm Noel Moore and this is Barry Moldenhauer. Today we're going to go over some of the best practices of the 360 EquiFlow system. We're going to talk about harnessing first. Uh, there's a big difference between the Green Star controller and the Rate Controller 2000 harness. So the Green Star controller is a 37 pin harness and the Rate Controller 2000 is a 47 pin harness. You want to make sure you have the correct harness for your application and which rate controller you have. They do make a adapter between the two from 47 to 37 pin, but this adapter will not work with the equal flow system. So you want to make sure that you have the correct harness for what your rate controller is. A gauge tree is an optional component on a 360 equal flow system, but it is highly recommended by our engineering department. The 360 gauge tree that joins the EquiFlow system on a toolbar gives the operator full view of what is happening at each row on the toolbar. It's just a nice and useful tool to allow the operator to visually see that everything is functioning right or possibly if a certain row needs attention. These are the hoses provided with your 360 EquiFlow system for your pump. These hydraulic hoses plug into your SCV. Uh, the three quarter inch hose, the bigger hose, is the return line. The half inch hose, which is a smaller hose, is for the feed line for your hydraulic system to run your pump. There are back check valves on the pump so you can't run the pump backwards, but if you happen to get these lines switched and fill this return line, full of fluid, uh, your pump won't spin, so you'll have to take this line off and bleed the line to get the fluid out to let that fluid return back to this SCV. So when you install your manifolds on your 360 equal flow system on your bar, you wanna make sure you put them somewhere that's easily accessible so you can get in there and uh, if you need to change your orifices or work on them, you're able to get to them. So with a 13 16 wrench, you can loosen the uh, hose barb and your orifice sits, just sits in there. You wanna make sure when you install these, you install with the numbers downstream to prevent early erosion of this orifice. And just would put it in there with the numbers downstream and then tighten it up. And the clear hose that comes off this hose barb is the, the hose that runs to your sight gauge tree and the, the black hose is the hose that runs to your knife. We're going to talk about strainers for a minute. Um, back here in the back between the tank and the EquiFlow system, we don't want to put any Y strainers. A uh, Y strainer can reduce your flow by 40% in colder weather and can affect your rates. Um, there is a big strainer already in the towers and you can put basket strainers on your sections if you want other uh, straining. walk through these steps to set up a 360 equal flow system on a John Deere monitor. The current toolbar that we have is a 24 row 60 foot toolbar with an equal flow on it and uh, just going to walk you through these steps. So uh, today I've got a um, integrated display into my 8345 RT and a rate controller 2000 installed on the implement. Um, as you can see um, go into the uh, Rate Controller 2000 into our setup menu and we're going to add a new profile. The Rate Controller 2000 does take uh, significant time to uh, load while setting up a new implement. Enter a profile name for the toolbar. And a machine type, be an NH3 tool. The toolbar we're using today is a 60 foot toolbar, for example. We're just doing straight NH3 applications, so we'll just have one product. Our application mode will be NH3. Currently on this uh, 
24 row example toolbar. We've got three sections set up. And they are all equal width sections of eight rows each. And the monitor go, uh, automatically populates the section widths for you. And these are, these are all already correct for us. You may have to adjust. There's two pressure sensors on our EquiFlow system. Um, there are optional sensors that are installed. They are going to be custom type sensors for both pressure sensor 1 and pressure sensor 2. Today I'm not going to set any alarms in my system, but if you wanted uh, to set preset in a minimum or maximum alarm for your pressure sensors, this is where you would do that now. The equal flow system is a dual valve standard type control system. The Rate Controller 2000 pre-populates valve response rates, dead bands, delays, and control efforts for that valve for you. These are fine if left alone for the 360 EquiFlow system. They, they do not need adjusted. Next we'll enter the flow meter calibration for the EquiFlow system. On the Rate Controller 2000, this is currently being read in pulses per 10 pounds of actual nitrogen uh, for applications. Our flow meter reads in 75.5 pulses per gallon of NH3. That is also that could also be translated into 755 pulses per 10 gallons of NH3, depending on what your units are in, uh, what your your flow meter units are in for your monitor setup. The original Green Star monitors uh, by John Deere. Uh, can be adjusted to different units, um, but the Rate Controller 2000 that we have here today is only in pulses per 10 pounds of actual in. Our flow meter uh, reads in 178 pulses per 10 pounds, so I'm going to go ahead and enter that number here. If you want to set up an ammonia tank, you can go ahead and enter the capacity, the level of that tank and preset an alarm to go off at a low tank level. And preset rate values. These rates are in actual pounds of nitrogen, so I'm gonna go ahead and preset some rates here today of 85, 100, and 115 pounds of nitrogen per acre. Uh, my rate bump, I would like that uh, in a five pound increment if I wanna change rate on the go. I have uh, currently, uh, three options uh, for your rate selection. You can pre predefine them like I just did. Uh, bump them, bump your rate on the go in the field, or do a map-based rate uh, off of a prescription. So rate smoothing is preset at 3% in the John Deere monitor. Um, because we are a pump type system, we see uh, more erratic behavior from flow meter uh, readings than a standard uh, heat exchanger system. It's fine if you leave this value at 3%, but be warned that you may see a little bit more uh, uh, jumpiness in the flow meter reading than a older uh, heat exchanger type system uh, with an older monitor that probably has a rate smoothing value of 10 to 15% preloaded into it. Today we're gonna leave that at 3%. An off rate alarm um, is preset in here of 20% and we're going to leave that. Now the rate controller has loaded our profile. After I've set up my toolbar and my profile, you'll get some warnings that your pressure sensors are not calibrated. To calibrate your pressure sensors, go into the setup menu for your rate controller 2000. Go to settings and go to pressure sensor setup. We want to calibrate both of our custom pressure sensors on the 360 EquiFlow system. As you see here, I've got sensor one highlighted. We're going to do a voltage-based calibration. Entering a value into um, uh, the voltage-based calibration of 20 millivolts per PSI. 
will give you the correct uh, calibration for the 360 equal flow pressure sensors. Go ahead and calibrate our second pressure sensor. Be sure to select sensor 2 from the drop down list and do a voltage based calibration of 20 millivolts per PSI. And now both pressure sensors have been calibrated. When you calibrate your pressure sensors, be sure that your 360 equal flow system has been fully um, bled of any anhydrous ammonia vapors. Even the smallest presence of anhydrous ammonia in the system can read some pressure when doing a voltage based calibration and can um, give you inaccurate pressure readings on your pressure sensors. We can go ahead and check the voltages on those sensors. If we go into diagnostics, under our readings, we'll go to uh, our pressure sensor, pressure sensors, and we can see the current voltage on these systems. Currently we have anhydrous ammonia in our Equiflow system, so when we um, when we do a zero pressure voltage system, this needs to be reading at around 0.5 voltage. We just recalibrated at 1.76, so this isn't uh, gonna be an accurate reading. Um, and you can see in here also that the pressure sensor is currently reading at 1.79. So we've got about 60 PSI of anhydrous in the system, but our pressure sensors will read about zero because we calibrated with product in the system. To do a uh, test, to test the control valves and the uh, other valves on the 360 Equiflow system, go to your Diagnostics tab and select Tests. We can do a control valve test, we can energize the system, or we can do a bleed system test all on the 360 Equiflow system. If we were to go to a control valve test, for example, select Control Valve Test, hit Start on the display, and hold down the two valves, and you'll be able to audibly hear the control valve opening and closing as you test the system. The same will occur if you go to bleed system or energize system and perform this test. You'll override your height switch for the system. You'll turn the system on and you will start the test and this will energize the system. One point I'd like to make when operating the 360 Equiflow system in regards to system pressure um, is that of the uh, pump pressure versus the pressure after the control valve on the system. Today I've got a pressure sensor installed in the 360 Equiflow system both after the pump uh, signified on the 4630 monitor here as pressure sensor number one. And I've got one installed after the control valve here labeled number two. As you can see these two pressures are within one PSI of each other. Right now they're both reading 53 PSI. Um, but as I um, increase hydraulic flow um, uh, from the system you'll see um, You'll see that, uh, that change. Now, a, as you go across the field, um, these pressures need to be very similar to each other. I'm uh, turning on and off my hydraulic flow uh, to try to get it to the numbers to uh, separate here. Um, but as you're operating, if you have everything set up correctly, the correct size orifices, your pump flow uh, is good. You notice these two pressures are within one or two PSI, PSI of each other. And that means all of the anhydrous is staying as a liquid. At this point, the control valve is almost completely open, so it's not restricting the flow of anhydrous ammonia to your, your sections or downstream to your knives. And this, is, this gives you the most benefit uh, and keeps that anhydrous as a liquid further into the system.